we are going to do in today's class is that we create the activity types, like various activity types. Uh, like, like again, I said, uh, labor activity, machine hour, setting up of uh, machines, and uh, uh, those activities we are going to create in SAP. We have to create an activity master data for that. These are helpful for creating, uh, for actually calculating the overheads. These are called as overhead costs uh, when we are doing actual cost and uh, when you are doing the product costing, uh, because these are the costs that are actually incurred for manufacturing a certain product. A finished goods or a semi-finished goods. So we need to find out what are the costs that is incurred by these uh, activities also. So the various type of activities that are performed at a cost center, which incur cost, are those are called as activity types. Example is labor activity, machine and cleaning activities, setup activities, uh, etc. And uh, these activity types we define will be measured. Uh, will measure those activity to calculate the cost of a product. That we manufacture so these activities performed will, uh, will be considered as a base to calculate the overhead cost which we generally apply during the product costing activity and uh, then how do we calculate these activity types how do we define these activity types in sap so before when we have we actually incur those costs we have to define those activity types and the use transaction that is used is kl01 for creation two for the display and three for the uh, sorry, three for the display and two for the change so we do have activity type groups as well as we have like in SKF groups, uh, statistical key figure groups, where we group all the similar activities under one certain, uh, uh, what I can say, activity. Uh, uh, and these groups are activities are actually having a similar characteristics and they're very important for the reporting purpose. In uh, these are just used for the reporting purpose. So we create again, the transaction code is KLH1 and KLH2 for the, change and KLS3 for the display. Okay, so once we complete this creation of activity in our SAP, uh, then we start uh, looking at the planning of this uh, activity types. There we have two, time, two kinds okay, that we discuss once we create these activities here. Okay. So, We have the transaction code KL01 for the creation of activity type. So uh, let's create uh, certain activities. Valid dates. Let's create this as a live activity. So, what are the activity units? It's measured in hours. Cost center category. Let's take star. Let's let make let us make this available for all the cost center category by choosing this activity type category. So whether this uh, particular activity type, it belongs to uh, uh, manual entry and manual allocation or uh, indirect determination of the cost or manual entry and indirect allocations. Let's take manual entry and manual allocations. So allocation cost element. So this is the secondary cost element, actually. What we need to be uh, create, which we need to have uh, in order to allocate for this particular uh, activity. So activity types are actually allocated with the uh, certain secondary cost element. So that is uh, why we need to have secondary cost elements created for this. Let's see if we have a secondary cost element. Let's so create this. Hmm. 
no cost elements selected from the top. Let's create the cost elements. We have the transaction code for the creation of secondary cost element, key is 06. So let's create a uh, Okay, let's set the controlling area as 001D first. Okay. Let's go to the transaction code key 06, secondary cost. So this number range, what we are giving is defined at some place. Uh, what number is uh, the six zero zero one zero zero? That's the range. What we are, you are giving, you are selecting one number where yes, we yes. have defined the range. Uh, so we do not uh, have any uh, number range for this cost elements actually. So we have uh, like we are not defining any kind of uh, number ranges for this actually. We have only for the controlling documents, the uh, CO number ranges. Uh, this we are actually just uh, creating on our own. How, how 600 is accepted? Like anything is accepted, any digit, 10 digit, five digit, six digit, something like that. Uh, we define it uh, when you are doing the configuration of uh, in the financial accounting itself. But uh, here in terms of controlling, we do not have any kind of uh, specific configuration for the cost element number ranges. Okay. Yeah, because uh, you know, in s hana we define in uh, groups. So I'm just wondering where we have defined this. No, we when we're defining this, uh, uh, when you're doing this configuration for this financial accounting, when you're creating the number ranges for uh, different uh, uh, GL accounts and uh, all, uh, there only we will define this cost elements actually. But here, uh, specifically for secondary cost elements, you're not defining any number ranges. Okay. We will be creating. Category one, what do you want? If we need to record the quantities for this, and unit of measure is hours. Let's see the cost centers. Save it. Let's create another one. It was actually for the different controlling area it was getting created. Here it is for this. DMS in hours. The cost center category is let me have a for all the cost center categories.
allocation cost alone. Let's find out the cost element that we could put it. Find this. Oh, okay. We created the cost element with a different uh, cost get, cost center category. Actually, that should be the 43 for the input uh, activity allocations. For all the activities that we're using for allocation purpose, uh, that need to be, uh, see, this is the allocation cost element, allocation secondary cost element. So we need to have the cost element category also, which is defined as, uh, which is defined for the uh, input activity allocation purpose. Here I created for the overhead cost, which is, uh, which is incorrect. So, Let's change it. Here, when we are actually creating it, we have to create it for the 43. That is, uh, look at that. This is internal activity allocations. So, Okay, now let's go to this. Let's try to look. Yeah, we have these many activities. Let's take for the labor activity, this cost element. Here, the price indicator will be selecting the price uh, calculation, uh, which is automatic as well as uh, for the uh, based upon the activities. So, plan price automatically based upon the activities. So that indicator will select that is one. And here also, uh, activity account type category, actual uh, activity type category, we will select it as. Uh, Manual entry, manual locations. Yes. Actual price automatically based upon the activity. Okay. So, this, so activity type has been created. Similar fashion, let's create the other two activity types. One is for the labor activity. Now we'll create it for the mission. Hours. Percentage category B star. Category one. Location cost element. We have separate uh, secondary cost element. Let's assign that uh, allocation cost element to this. Mission hours. So one. Then let's create one for them. So we are doing this activity, creating this activity test because we need this for cost center planning for activity uh, types for uh, what for the, all the activity type planning that we are doing that we are going to do. For that, uh, we need like, for example, we are setting up the rates for all those activities that for that we need to have all those activity type master tech created.
So now we have this activity types created. Now we also have uh, activity type groups for this. Like uh, as we have for the statistical figure, the transaction code is KLH1. We have activity type groups. This is for the reporting purpose. We're trying to do this. Uh, let's make it as uh, production activity. I cannot have those many characters available. Yeah. Just similar to what we did in the last class for the statistical figures. Under this, let's uh, have the activity types. So we had activity type uh, 60001. Uh, I think it was 440101 okay. so Set up activity. So these are the activities which are doing it in production. Uh, these, are, these are just preparing buffers. You can uh, have multiple uh, other uh, groups created for this production activity, administrative activity, canteen departments, and then we can uh, segregate those activity types uh, based upon that particular uh, uh, nodes. Let's say this. Back. So this is about the activity center master time and activities, activity type groups that we are going to create.